Hey, I'm Evan Smith with Revan Media, and today I'm up here at VMP Performance, and we're talking dyno numbers. I got Alex here, he's one of the head tuners, came out to the shop today to take a look at some Mustangs. They do some really cool supercharging, they've got a couple dynos, they've got a lot of experience with Mustangs, and Alex and I got into a little conversation about engine dynos versus chassis dynos. So Alex, what, what were we talking about before? Well, we were talking about how much drivetrain percentage is lost from the flywheel to the rear drive wheels. Uh, back in the day, people always referenced 10% before chassis dynos became a thing. Nowadays, you can reference anywhere between 15 for a manual, automatic, about 18% drivetrain loss. Right, and some of the reasons for that are that not every vehicle is the same. You could even have the same engine, but the powertrain could be different. The tire compound could be different the weather could be different. Right. So there's a lot of factors that actually go into defining how much power you're making at the wheels. Right. Um, a lot of people don't recognize the fact that the more power you make, the more loss you're gonna have because there's more friction throughout the drive line that it, you know, it, the engine drives the transmission and it's pressing on the parts. Anytime that there's gears involved and you have more power, that's more loss. So as you go up in horsepower, 10% might work great if you have 400 horsepower and you have a rollerized manual transmission, right. a really good angle on your drive shaft, a spool, but you start getting into boosted vehicles that make 1,000 horsepower, you're gonna have more than 10%. Exactly, nowadays modern vehicles have air conditioning, they have a bunch of accessories, they have bigger brakes, and you tend to see a bigger drivetrain loss, so it's not, a, it's not a exact number 15 to 18%, and like he said, that number can go up and down depending on the component tree that you have actually driving the wheels. Yeah, it's very important to understand that the dyno number, the way that you figure the dyno number on a dyno, um, a chassis dyno is basically a measurement of acceleration and RPM. It right. knows the time it takes to accelerate, or you know, acceleration over time, really. An engine dyno really measures torque. It's measuring the load on the engine that it's applying to a brake that's trying to hold the engine back. Right. So they're actually two completely different ways of deriving the same horsepower number, which is actually a figure derived from a formula. Right, exactly. And we're not going to physically take your engine out of the car, put it on the, the engine dyno, and show you what our mods make in terms of right. difference. We're going to put it on a chassis dyno, and that's the way the aftermarket tends to measure mods. Rear, rear wheel horsepower is the basically known uh, unit of measurement uh, in the aftermarket. Manufacturers always use mostly flywheel horsepower. Right, and there's a good reason for that. Um, chassis dynos are relatively affordable. Um, so shops can afford them where an engine dyno, you have to build a complete dyno right. cell, you want controlled atmosphere. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. Not that there's not a lot of setup for a proper chassis dyno, but they are affordable for the average shop to go ahead and own. The big advantage to a chassis dyno is a customer could come in and within a matter of minutes to strap the car down, make a couple pulls, you've got a number on what that car is making. Now, that can be used for a lot of different purposes. Some customers just want to brag. Hey, man, I made 800 horsepower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but the big thing is either tuning or if you're doing an aftermarket part installation, you want to know how much power you gained or maybe if you lost. Basically, what we get a lot is people want to know where their car stands. They go on, they put it on a chassis dyno, run it up, make a number, see what happens. Then we can then kind of consult, consult them as to what to do depending on their power goals. If they want to make 100 more, 200 more, 20 more, we can cater to their needs based on the number that they have and based on our experience and tuning, tuning expertise. Right, and then also there's another element which would be actually, like you said, tuning the vehicle. Right. So you're not out on the street all the time looking at a laptop. You can do some of the tuning in a shop, in a controlled environment. And how much of that do you guys do? Well, we do, a lot of the stuff we do is remote. Everything, a lot of the stuff we do is remote email tuning. So we rely on the customer to do their own data logging, but we always prefer you to come here to VMP over in New Smyrna Beach, get it on the dyno. We can actually have your car in a controlled environment. We can actually do some measuring, do some consultation as to what your power needs are. So you don't have to go out there and do it yourself. Right, now earlier you mentioned uh, like accessory drive and different ways or areas of the vehicle where you can actually lose power per se. Um, so why don't we take a look under the hood and show people the, uh, the front engine dress and maybe explain where some of these losses occur. Okay, let's take a look. All right. All right, so we're under the hood now, Alex. We're checking things out. This is a pretty cool Mustang with a Pro Charger. And uh, to drive our point home, we'll take a look at the engine. And what's up front of the engine is the front engine dress. Right. And basically, you got accessories that rob horsepower. Yeah, uh, actually, Evan just informed me that Ford does do their testing with the engine dress on, meaning all the serpentine belts, all the accessory drives, and that's how they get their horsepower number. As were the old days, they would just basically 
dumb it down, gut it, just put the engine on it with open exhaust and try to get their horsepower numbers that way. So calculating drivetrain loss really is dependent on what's happening up front. If you have V-belt, if you have crazy accessories up here, it can actually rob a little bit of horsepower. Right, and uh, the, the newer cars have much more efficient um, front engine accessory drive, where if you look back to the Fox Body Mustang days, 225 horsepower, if you took the, the uh, factory serpentine belt off, put a shorter one on, so basically at the drag strip, you eliminated the power steering pump right. and the air pump, the car would generally go about two tenths quicker and a little bit more on mile an hour, and two tenths in that range was about 20 horsepower. So if you think about it, each accessory robbing 10 horsepower, that's actually quite a lot. It is quite a lot. Back in the Fox Body days, that was one of the, the better mods to do. It's quick, take the belt off, it actually makes, you know, goes down the track a little quicker. So it tells you how much the front accessories were actually robbing as we're nowadays. Everything is way more efficient. Uh, it has, you know, composite materials, so you won't see as much loss in terms of horsepower and drag on newer engines. Yeah, you have more efficient bearings, and I think just the actual design of the way the belt wrap is is well more, it's uh, better engineered, more thought out. Um, and these are all things that, you know, you need to consider when you're modifying your Mustang. Right, they all contribute to drivetrain loss. So if you're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff here running a whole bunch of other different things, auxiliary drives or anything like that, it will rob horsepower, but less likely on more modern vehicles. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.